Hello, this is Gray Hughes. I'm making an update video on the Timothy Cunningham case. Just there seems to be a little bit more clarification on some things and a little different wording on in some articles and um, on a video that I was watching. Okay, so um, you know this is one of the quotes in Express Digest. I don't, you know, haven't really heard of him, but this is the same thing I, we've read before and seen before. I will say that we as a family were aware of some personal issues that were going on with Tim. There was also some work issues that had occurred, Timothy's dad Terrell said in the shocking new interview. His parents could not reach him after texting and calling repeatedly when they drove from their home in Maryland to his Georgia home, okay? But they had tried to call him ever, ever since that same morning when they, they, you know, they felt like there was something wrong with him. He just wasn't answering, wasn't answering, and wasn't answering. Okay, now um, here's some another video that was pretty different than some of the stuff that we've seen and heard before. Let me play it. The questions mount with each passing day family of Timothy Cunningham are at a loss. He's vanished, leaving behind his wallet, car, and dog. His father tells us when they last spoke, he seemed a bit confused and upset, adding to the concern. See that? That's a little different. He said that he sounded a little bit of, a little bit confused and upset. Okay, now what do you think that's all about right there? Okay, I think to me that sounds like he is struggling. Okay, he, he's obviously got some personal issues, he's got work issues, he seemed confused, and he seemed upset. Okay, so something was going wrong with him. Now, what, what he was upset about and confused about, I don't know, but using the word confused, it doesn't sound like he was confused about something. It sounds like he was confused mentally, all right? That's what it sounds like to me, because... If he was confused about something, you would mention that, but he just sounded like he was confused and upset. Okay, so you see how there's a difference there? Now, the other piece that was more clarification was the precise date that Timothy asked the neighbor to have his wife remove the phone number. Okay, but it's, there's also a little bit difference in semantics. The way the wife tells the story and the way the husband tells the story seemed different to me, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you why, okay? Okay, I'm gonna read this paragraph right here that seemed interesting. It says, as a parent, you have indicators when things are just not right with your child, and that was the case, Terrell Cunningham told CNN. A few days before that, Cunningham asked his neighbor for a strange request, okay? My wife and him, let me make this bigger for you. It says, my wife and him, and I think and it was meant to be had, okay? Because it doesn't make sense. My wife and him and swapped. It, I think what it meant to say was um, had. So, my wife and, hi and him had swapped phone numbers. Saturday, Tim called over to me from across the way and told me to take his number out of her phone okay and that's uh, Christopher Tory uh, all right the husband of Viviana Viviana's the you know his wife and that's the person that Timothy wanted to have take his number out of her phone okay but you see the difference between the way she said it and he said it the way Viviana Viviana worded it was that Timothy told the husband to then have her take it out. So it was a little bit more polite sounding, a little bit more um, just kind of like, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the better word. Like it just sounded more polite, okay? But the way that, that Christopher explains it is that Tim called over to me from across the way and told me to take his number out of her phone. That's kind of, kind of more like an order, you know? I could hear it sounding like this. Hey, take my number out of your wife's phone, all right? And then, it seemed a bit strange, Tori said. 
Yeah, that, that does seem a little bit strange. Okay, but you see how there's a difference there. Those, those are, you know, the wife made it seem a little bit more polite and the husband didn't. Okay, so that actually dispels some of the people who say that the wife's trying to cover up for the husband. He made it seem a little bit more, you know, like nefarious sounding, like, Timothy was ordering, but 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 it actually puts the more of the burden on Timothy at this point. Like, wow, Timothy's the one that sounded a little bit more angry. Where when the wife told it, it seemed like it was just more of a a request, but it was weird, you know. All right, so let me just kind of show you Google Earth here, and you know we can kind of picture how this might have went. You know, so he. Yelled from across the way, Christopher said. So he's probably right here, and this is on Saturday. So keep in mind that the previous Monday, he had found out that he didn't get the job that he applied for. Okay, so that, that's this whole thing that's going on here is that the CDC is trying to thread a needle, you know, by saying, well, we promoted him. I don't know what the police are talking about. He didn't, he didn't uh, get passed over for another promotion. And yes, that's true, because it wasn't technically called a promotion. A promotion in the military and, and perhaps places like this, the CDC, you get promotions based on merit. Okay, so if you're, you're, you're achieving and you're, people are recognizing your work, you get a promotion. All right, now that's not what was going on here. Uh, Timothy Cunningham applied for a position you know i don't know if it was like a department head it seemed like it was a it was a higher position so people like us we would call that a, a promotion right like oh i got promoted i became a uh, you know but that's not what it's called over there he just didn't get the job that he applied for so the cdc saying see we didn't pass him over for a promotion okay but they don't fill in the rest of the sentence you know but he just didn't get a job that he, he applied for. Okay, so the Monday prior, okay, so what day was that? It was the 14th was, or the 12th is Monday, all right? So it must have been on the 5th that he was um, told that he didn't get that job that he applied for. Then he went to work on Monday and Tuesday, all right? Then on, um, let's see. He went, yeah, he went to work on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, I think. Yeah, because he went to work on Monday and found out he didn't get the job. Then he went to work on Tuesday and Wednesday. Then he called in sick Thursday and Friday. Okay, then on Saturday, that's when he was outside, you know, right here, and yelled across the way to Christopher saying, hey, take my number out of your wife's phone. So he's actually telling him to take it out of her phone, not him, hey, ask your wife to have her take my number out of her phone. It was more like telling him to do it, you know. A uh, little bit weird, a little difference there, that there's some semantics that are different there. And I'd like to, I mean, the husband's actually a little bit more credible because he's the one that actually spoke to Timothy Cunningham, okay. All right, so, you know, on Saturday, they have this conversation, all right. Then, um, let's see, on Sunday, you know, still part of the weekend. Then on Monday, he goes in for a meeting to figure out why he didn't get that job that he applied for. Okay, and he was upset about that, all right? But prior to that, you know, he had spoken to his sister, and he tried to get a hold of his mother, texted her at 521 in the morning on Monday. Then he tried calling... I guess tried to call her again at like 9.15, 9.12 or something like that on the way back probably from the meeting at the CDC. And then he apparently he came home. Um, all of his stuff was found. His car was in the garage. His keys were in the house. All of his credit cards. Everything that he would need to survive out in the real world was inside the house. And the front door was locked. Now, another neighbor said that they saw him jogging. Okay, don't you think it's possible that that neighbor really did see him jogging and he had the, a spare key, which most people have, to go jogging with so you don't have to, you know, take it off your keychain every time. 
you know i don't know if it's pretty hard sometimes when you get on one of those thick loops and you have to pry it up with your fingernail and slide it around right so a lot of people have a spare key that they can go jogging with now did something happen to him when he went jogging okay if he went jogging they just haven't been able to verify that and the reason they can't verify it is because there's probably no surveillance cameras where he went jogging right because picture how this would work right if he went jogging and he was going to go on a longer jog he wouldn't be running around in this neighborhood here you know he probably would take off and then start running down this direction you know who knows right or maybe this way maybe on this little side street right here it's kind of a decent little jog you know and this kind of merges over here kind of runs into that railroad track area you know I mean, that's why I think people should be looking over here, you know. But if I was going to go jogging, that's probably what I would do. I would take this route. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, you see how this, this is going to be a way less traveled on road than that other road out there. All right, so let's just keep going down this road here. And let's say he's on this road and a car hit him. You know, and just knocked him off the side of the road and he, you know, went down this ravine right there. You know, there's ravines along the road in all directions here. You know, nobody would ever find him, you know, especially if you're not looking there. And, you know, let's say it was a hit and run type of situation. All right, so he's still running. Let's just, just say, let's, I'm just doing this hypothetically. He's running. And then up there is the railroad tracks, you know. So, you know, who knows? I just think they need to do a little bit more searching around in some of these wooded areas near his house. Okay, especially off the side of the road in these areas. You know, car, this is kind of a narrow road here. You know, maybe somebody wasn't paying attention and hit him and he went flying off the side down a ravine you know we just don't know okay so i thought it was interesting that there's a slight variation between what the neighbors were saying um, about the removal of the phone number situation and i also think it's a, a little bit telling that the parents said that he seemed confused and upset okay that's a little different wording than we've heard before you know, confused makes it sound like there's something wrong with him mentally at that moment. You know, maybe like some sort of a breakdown he was having. You know, but uh, that doesn't mean, you know, doesn't necessarily mean he killed himself. That's, that's just my, um, my number one theory. But moving up quickly in, in there is that he, you know, went somewhere and then something happened to him. Okay. I don't think anybody came by the house and took him, and I don't think the CDC was involved. I think he made it home, and then something happened to him after he left the house, okay, because the door was locked. I think he had a spare key, and that's why a jog makes so much sense, doesn't it? You know, he's got a key, he was able to lock the door, and he goes running. All right, so that's all I have for you this time. Um, I... You know, I wish we had a lot more detailed information, but this is where I'm at in this case. All right. So I think that, and you know, if I was just going to rate it, I would say, you know, the number one thing is that he was really frustrated and, and down. You know, he locked the door and he took off and maybe he killed himself somewhere. Okay. The second one is, is that he did go jogging or for a walk and had the key and was either hit by a car or something more sinister happened while he was out okay or maybe he went somewhere with a friend and they are just starting over somewhere or perhaps an ex some sort of a lover that he might may have had um picked him up and then you know killed him or something like that i i just think it's so um unlikely that the cdc did something now if you say is it possible that the cdc took him out 
Well, sure, you know. I mean, I you know, it's also possible aliens from Zeta Minor abducted him and he's on a uh, UFO ship. Although I will say that the CDC scenario is more likely than that, okay? All right, so I guess that's all I have for you this time. So until next time, be safe, everybody.